When some of you think Epiphone, you may think of it only as the affordable, foreign-manufactured little brother to Gibson. What a lot of folks forget is that Epiphone has its own storied history as a USA company and actually was the direct rival to Gibson for many years. The Epiphone name came from the nickname of the owner of the company, Epimenondas Epi Statopolo who in the 1920s and 30s primarily sold banjos and mandolins under the Epiphone Banjo Corporation in New York City. By 1935, the name was shortened to just Epiphone, and with the jazz age in full swing, Epiphone became the premier brand of archtop and hollow body guitars. Models like the Zephyr, Broadway, and Emperor embody the art deco big city aesthetic of big bands and jazz of the 30s. This is really where you start to see the competition heat up between Gibson and Epiphone in the electric guitar market. And with Epiphone being headquartered in New York City, they really led the race here because of their proximity to the artists of the time. These models, like the Master Built Deluxe, Emperor Regent, and Zephyr Emperor Regent, were far more ornate than similar Gibson models, giving Epiphone a desirable edge on archtops during these eras. But with Epistatopalo's sudden passing in the early 1940s and a growing lack of interest from the family to keep Epiphone innovating into the late 50s, Epiphone was up for sale. And in 1957, ironically, would be acquired by Chicago Musical Instruments and operated by their biggest rival, Ted McCarty and Gibson. From 1958 to 1969, Epiphone was relocated to the Kalamazoo factory, the same factory as Gibson, and using the same techniques, materials, and in some cases, the same designs. Epiphone guitars were created side by side with their Gibson counterparts and sold to the many distributors who did not have Gibson deals as an alternative high quality instrument. Because of this and modern associations with Epiphone being a more budget brand, many Kalamazoo era Epiphones are essentially more rare Gibson quality guitars that can be found for a better price. You can check out Reverb's price guide and set up watch alerts for deals on all the models we'll discuss today. Let's run down all the electric models in the Kalamazoo era. Epiphone's first solid body guitars, the Crestwood Custom and the Coronet, were released in 1959 and were meant as alternatives to models like the Les Paul Jr., but interestingly, at a slightly higher price. These solid bodies are still sought after for their solid build quality and materials, many times using parts from pre-1959 Gibson guitars. The Crestwood Custom and Deluxe have all the flair you would come to expect from the 1960s and really were ahead of their time models. A year later, in 1960, the Wilshire would be released as an alternative to what we know as the SG Special. Early Wilshires featured P90 pickups, a translucent cherry red finish, and similar scale length and control layout to the SG. A young Jimi Hendrix would play a Wilshire when performing with Don Covey and Little Richard. Over the course of the decade, with several modifications and variations, around 10,000 of these solid body models would be created and shipped. But it was really the semi-hollow and hollow body guitars that would have the largest impact in the 60s. Epiphone would continue to produce its pre-Gibson inspired archtop models like the Emperor, Broadway, and Zephyr, but they also had some new models that incorporated thinner bodies and necks. The Windsor and Sorrento were sharp Florentine single cut models that came in single or dual pickup options and would have been right at home for jazz, rockabilly, or rock and roll. The Century was a Gibson ES125T equivalent with its non-cutaway, full auditorium-sized body and early models featured 1950s P90s with white covers acquired from the Epiphone New York days. Similarly, the Granada was released in 1962 and featured a similar thin line ES125T body. It included the same single coil pickup as used on Gibson Melody Makers and was the least expensive Epiphone hollow body guitar. The least expensive electric guitar in Epiphone's line was the Olympic which was also Epiphone's best-selling guitar, being that it was targeted as a student model and was Epiphone's version of the Melody Maker. It went through a variety of changes, from starting life as a single cutaway Les Paul style to a double cut style, and eventually changed to the asymmetrical double cut style associated with other Epiphone solid bodies at the time. The release of the Casino in 1961 
would eventually be what solidified Epiphone as a household name among instrument enthusiasts. Based on Gibson's ES-330 released the previous year, its tan sunburst, fully hollow, dual P90 body outfitted with a tremotone vibrato would be used by British invasion rock bands like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. The casino would have a few variations in the 1960s, but still remains an iconic and best-selling guitar today. Epiphone also released two semi-hollow models that corresponded to Gibson models like the ES-335 and the ES-355 in the Riviera and the Sheraton. These guitars featured the same dimensions and materials as their Gibson counterparts, including their center block body design that helped reduce feedback, but did exhibit some differences, such as having mini humbuckers, different tail pieces and headstock designs, and they were made in fairly limited numbers, unlike their very popular Gibson counterparts. The Sheraton in particular was a very ornate version of the Riviera and was Epiphone's second most expensive guitar next to the Emperor. Guitars like the Riviera and Sheraton would have a resurgence in the 1990s, being heavily associated with British rock groups like Oasis and later groups like The Strokes, and today they remain staples in Epiphone's lineup. Epiphone also introduced a few models during the Kalamazoo period that are not nearly as well known. Howard Roberts models were signature jazz boxes with a single jazz humbucker attached to the neck, similar to Gibson's Johnny Smith model, of which the Roberts guitar shared the same pickup. The Howard Roberts models came in a variety of outfits through its run, including fully acoustic models and very ornate models. The Kyola was the high-end signature model made for jazz pop guitarist Al Kyola. It featured a thin line acoustic electric body, similar to a casino, but with mini humbuckers and Epiphone's tone expressor switches. Only a few hundred were produced. The Kyola was not the first Epiphone to include the Tone Expressor system. It was available on the Epiphone Professional outfit, which was a Riviera-style model that came as an amplifier and guitar combo. The system allowed for all kinds of tonal options when used together, including controlling tremolo and reverb from the guitar. Around 400 of these models were produced in the 1960s. Though Epiphone was primarily known as an acoustic bass company at the time, there were some notable electric basses created during this era. The Embassy was a full-scale bass equivalent of their guitar models like the Crestwood. The Newport was a short-scale version, and both of these basses used parts that were found on the Gibson Thunderbird and EBO basses. The Rivoli was the Epiphone equivalent of the Gibson EB2, with very little difference. Interestingly, these very cool semi-hollow basses became very popular with UK rock groups of the time like the Small Faces, Animals, Yardbirds, and Free. None of these basses sold particularly well, but they remain amazing gems of the era. As the 60s drew to a close, CMI would end up selling Epiphone to Norlin, who changed gears and began a whole new era of Epiphone manufacturing in Japan. But having been built in the same factory and with the same parts as their Gibson equivalents in much smaller quantities, these Kalamazoo era Epiphones stand out as just as classic as many Gibson and Fender guitars of the first electric guitar renaissance. These vintage Epis pop up on Reverb all the time. If you're looking for one, set up a watch alert so you get notified as soon as they're listed. Thanks for watching. Let us know about your favorite Epiphones in the comments below. We'll see y'all next time. Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo.